Buying beer should be pretty simple, but with so many choices and places to buy, it can be challenging. How do you know the beer you're buying is worth your time and money? How's it going? Steven here. This video is not going to tell you what to buy, because that's best left up to you. But this should help guide you on when and where to buy. If you're new here, I know what you're thinking. Show me your credentials. They're in my butthole. You want to look? I've been on both sides of the counter, so I know what to look out for. Let's get to it. In the words of Yogi Berra, you can observe a lot by watching. So have you ever really looked around at the liquor store? While wine and spirits have very long or nearly infinite shelf life, beer's very short shelf life requires some babysitting. Three things can tell you how much attention and care the beer is getting. Is it cold? Beer is kept cold mainly for stability, but also because cold beer is preferred. If most or all of it is in the fridge, that's a good sign. Some styles are okay to store a warmer. Belgians, farmhouse styles, certain stouts, and barley wines are a few. Now I know this is personal, but how big is it? In this case, bigger is not better. A small beer section is ideal. The ratio between ordering and selling is called turnover. A smaller selection requires focus on good turnover because you have limited space that needs to be freed up before bringing in new items or bulking up on stock. Regardless of the size, it's a delicate balance that depends on multiple factors like demand, trends, and seasonality. With good turnover, the beer is not lingering on the shelf. Best case scenario, this means constantly fresh beer. Is it clean and organized? Dust, broken glass, dried beer, packs picked apart but not placed in singles, etc., scattered throughout, are not good signs. A department organized by a bare minimum of style is what you should keep an eye out for. If you see further organization, like alphabetical by brewer within a style, you're in the right place. You can't buy something you can't find, so if there's no effort made to help you through good organization, it might be time to move on, even if the thrill is sometimes in the chase. If this is an occasional issue with a particular store, you may have just caught them on an off day. If this is a chronic state of affairs, it might be time to shop somewhere else. With all that said, don't judge a book by its cover, because it doesn't tell you the whole story, which is why you do a little research. If the store has social media, is it updated frequently? If the beer they post doesn't stick around for long, that turnover that we were talking about earlier is probably not bad. There are two takeaways from that. The buyer knows the market, or the buyer is under ordering. Either way, it's going out the door fast. If the beer you're interested in was posted very recently, it's probably in good shape without knowing anything further. We'll get to package dates in a second, which will tell you definitively, but if you're unsure at a glance or they have no social media, ask the owner or buyer. This relies on their honesty and your ability to know it. If they seem trustworthy, you probably have nothing to worry about. I suspect that if there is a problem, they'll take care of it for you. While I recommend this step so you don't waste your time jumping from store to store, you can skip it if you don't use social media or don't like talking to people and move on to the next one. Reading date codes. Freshness has been fetishized by the beer community, and despite what you may hear, you do not need to drink a beer immediately. Sorry to kink shame. If a brewery has good processes and the retailer keeps it cold, that beer doesn't become undrinkable in a week or a month. But freshness to a point is still important. Why? First, buying a beer at its best lets you experience the brewer's intention fully. Second, most craft beer is unpasteurized. It trades greater flavor for shorter shelf life. Third, all beer eventually expires, even pasteurized macro, just much later. Most breweries are nice enough to include a package code, and there are three main types that you'll see. Packaged or born on, because beers are children. Best buy and producer specific. Here's how to read them. Gregorian is the most common and easiest to understand, typically shown as month, day, year, but maybe day, month, year for the Europeans. Julian is less common and a little harder to understand at a glance. It's typically shown as year and day. The first two digits are the last two digits of the year, and the last three digits are the day of the year. Producer specific is unique to each, so there's no general format they follow. A little bit of Googling should tell you what you need. The worst is seeing keep cold, drink fresh, but no date. They played us like a damn fiddle! Aside from Best Buy dates, which you should definitely adhere to, it's up to you what to do with the information. I'm just going to give you my personal shopping guidelines that have served me pretty well. For lagers, light ales, and IPAs, I'm usually comfortable with up to two and a half months old if refrigerated, and if they're pushing that limit, I try to drink them sooner rather than later. For dark ales, up to eight months, but it also depends on what flavorings are added. My experience has taught me things like coffee don't tend to age very well. Vintage beers, only from a store that I trust, but it depends heavily on the style and any flavorings that might be added to it. If you buy beer regularly from a shop that's keeping it fresh, cold, and doing all the right stuff, raise a glass to them. If you found a shop doing all those things because of this video, go ahead and let me know in the comments. If you wanna know how to keep beer in tip-top shape after you bring it home, check out this video. Cheers, and thanks for watching.